All right, everyone. Hello and welcome into the day after the Super Bowl, a day where I think it is the perfect opportunity to have a discussion about the Minnesota Vikings regarding how far away are they from actually contending from a Super Bowl appearance and a Super Bowl victory. What are the lessons that we learned from yesterday's game that we can use as a point of departure after watching the Chiefs and Eagles to sort of figure out what the Minnesota Vikings are missing? What are they not doing? What do they need to do to get there? We've always had these conversations at the end of the year. Um, and they sort of seem to be circling back to the same uh, riddles that we haven't solved or haven't been able to come close to solving, like fixing the offensive line. That one's plagued us since 2017. Uh, fixing the defense. That's been a common occurrence for us to discuss for the past couple of years. And then most recently is who else is going to be a playmaker other than Justin Jefferson? So we've got a lot of our own problems but maybe we're not looking at this with a broad enough scope in terms of building a championship contender. So I wanted to sort of take today to try to figure out what I learned from yesterday's game and apply it to the Minnesota Vikings for this offseason and the offseasons going forward and how they're going to reach the ultimate goal of winning a Super Bowl, because ultimately that's the whole point of this. Otherwise, what are we doing here? Now, if you ask Vegas, they think that the 13-4 and defending NFC North champion Minnesota Vikings uh, they think that the Vikings are not a strong contender for a Super Bowl next season, and I would kind of agree with that. So they just went 13-4. and four. We're coming off a division title. The Vegas Sportsbooks odds opened up yesterday for the next Super Bowl champion, and the Vikings are way down at the list at plus 4,000. Um, they're, they're behind the Browns. They're behind the Jets. They're behind the Dolphins. They think the Browns have a better chance at a Super Bowl than we do. Actually, I think the Browns and Vikings were in the same tier, if you will. I think they were just listed in alphabetical order, but... At the same time, those aren't good odds for a team that just had a really good season. 13-4 and four is really good, right? That's what we've all been telling ourselves. Maybe it wasn't all that it was cracked up to be. I don't know. Vegas seems to know things. You know, I always try to look at spreads and stuff when I'm doing pick and whatnot because um, that's how they make money. Uh, so the Vikings are in an interesting spot where they're coming off a really great season, but they're not really the favorites to do much of anything next year because of just the state of the roster. And that's what we need to talk about is what did we learn yesterday from the Super Bowl between the Chiefs and Eagles? How can we apply it to this roster? And how can they improve it going forward? So there's a couple of personal takeaways I have from watching yesterday's game. I believe I have four of them in total, maybe five. So I'll try to rifle through them all real quick. And then, of course, in the comments section, let me know what you thought about the game in general yesterday. Um, just, just a terrible way for it to end on that ticky-tack holding call. I understand a penalty is a penalty, but the same at the same time, on the biggest stage in the world, why are you making that call as an NFL official? I just, I don't understand. The turf is going to be a topic of discussion. You spend two years and 800 some million dollars growing grass just for one game and you you couldn't do it. Everybody's slipping and sliding everywhere. They can't even celebrate without tripping over themselves. And then um, it just, just the overall, uh, just the overall flow of the game was, was, was intense because at one point it felt like each team was just one backbreaking play from breaking away and, and, and putting this out of reach. But it ended up coming down to the wire. And unfortunately, the refs made a critical decision at the end that sort of robbed us from a last minute, uh, you know, sort of game winning attempt by the Philadelphia Eagles and Jalen Hurts. But it is what it is. The Chiefs are the winner and uh, it will go down in the record books as such. So, of course, let me know what you guys think of all of that. So my takeaways from the game, I'm going to I'm going to apply th maybe three to five here real quick as it regards to the Minnesota Vikings uh, going forward. So obviously observation number one from yesterday's Super Bowl is you have to have an elite quarterback to be any to be in any sort of realm of discussion of being a Super Bowl contender. And I don't believe that we have that. Kirk Cousins, very good, very good quarterback, borderline great quarterback, but he's not Patrick Mahomes. He's not Joe Burrow. He's not Josh Allen. Um, it, it's, it's just a situation where... Uh, <laughs> You know, you know, he's done what he he's done what he can do. We we've kind of seen the ceiling. I don't think that there's anything left for Kevin O'Connell to unlock and Kirk Cousins going forward. And he is going to make sure that we are disaster proof. I will give him that. He is he is very good at making sure that this team does not fall into the basement of the division or have a very high draft pick in this league. I think the worst that we've done since he's been here is pick 12th overall, uh, which they end up trading back anyway. So. Kirk Cousins good, but he's he's just not at the at the level where he is going to put this team on his back and um, 
and, and and really just take them to the promised land. I just I just don't see how it happened. Even with Justin Jefferson, I just I just don't see how it's going to happen. So um, that's and I know people don't want to talk about it, and they're so sick of the Kirk Cousins discussion. But that's the reality that we live in: is that Kirk Cousins is part of this equation, whether we like it or not. You know, and you 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 just saw what the product on the field yesterday in hell, and even the the the, the championship weekend between. Burrow and Mahomes, and then you had Jalen Hurts, and then you see what happens when your starting quarterback goes out for the 49ers. You have to put in your backup, and it's game over because you can't do anything. So, and, and I'm not trying to enter Brock Purdy into this discussion. That's just happened to be who the Eagles played. So, anyway, you can you can win this game. Uh, you, you can win in the NFL with uh, with with mid tier good slash great quarterbacks, but uh, I think to win a Super Bowl, you need to have uh, people with. Very elite talent, and I'm just going to end that part there. So it's something that we all know. Next, uh, next observation: we really need a, a ball hawk playmaker on defense. I don't know if that's going to end up being Lewis Seen one day. I, I don't know if that's going to be somebody that we draft this year. But it seems like both teams yesterday had one of those guys: Nick Bolton on the Chiefs, Hassan Reddick for the Eagles. Just everywhere around the ball, just everywhere, interrupting, disrupting, making plays. Um, that's what we need. I think for the past couple of years, that was Eric Kendricks for us. He was always around the ball, ball hawking linebacker. He's not that guy anymore. We've got to figure out a way to make uh, somebody take over that role. And the only one right now on this roster that I could foresee becoming that would be Lewis Seen if he is able to recover from his injury in a manner of such that doesn't interrupt his development here at the next level. So I think that they need to heavily be looking at linebacker in the draft. I wasn't very high on Nick Bolton coming out of Missouri in the draft a few years ago, um, but maybe that's maybe yesterday's game has changed my um, changed my opinion on it. So uh, I think we need to find a ball hawking playmaker ASAP because we have to have somebody terrorize terrorizing opposing offenses because the offenses that you're going to see in the playoffs, especially later in the bracket, are going to be otherworldly. So uh, uh, that that's definitely one of my takeaways uh, from that. Takeaway number three. Uh, we, we have to have better, I, I don't want to say like better coaching decisions, but better coaching, not demeanor either. What is it? Um, just maybe a presence of mind, better coaching presence of mind, because you saw yesterday, bad things happened to both teams and they didn't panic. You know, they didn't panic. They, they stuck to their style of football and they played their game and ended up working out for one team. There has to be a winner and a loser, but at the same time, you didn't see them, you know, reach down into uh, very desperate attempts to move the football or play defense. I think what they did was admirable is that they were like, okay, that was bad. Shake it off. Let's go do it again. So hopefully with the onboarding of Brian Flores, uh, making, you know, maybe either being given more freedom to make adjustments or be, maybe just being more knowledgeable about what adjustments he needs to make as opposed to a Donatel from last year. Because I mean, you look at the second half of that Super Bowl, huge adjustments, huge adjustments were, were made by the Chiefs. And that's something I feel like Vikings fans were frustrated with all season long about our team is that in the second half, we just kept doing the same things over and over. And we felt like that with the offense when we had, you know, the, the Kubiaks running the show. It was just the same thing every week. They would not adjust. And so I think that that it needs to be the mindset is that you need to not be able to panic in situations where, you know, you could end up doing desperate things and you need to be able to make smart adjustments to what your opponent is doing. So hopefully we are able to master those um, traits going forward from the coaching staff. And last but not least, I'm going to end the video here on this one final observation. Um, and this kind of goes without saying, and it's a very obvious uh, observation, but the Vikings have to start drafting better. It has been a number of years since we have had an impactful draft class other than Christian Derrissaw and Justin Jefferson uh, coming out and, you know, making an immediate impact, you know. Uh, we're, we're not, the reason that our backups are terrible and our depth is poor is because we're not hitting on those middle to late round guys. You look at the Kansas city chiefs, Isaiah Pacheco, I believe he was a seventh round running back. Um, you, you've got guys that they brought in from other teams, first round busts like Kadarius Tony, um, Juju Smith Schuster was, was not a, a draft pick bust or even necessarily a, 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 a player that they selected in the draft, but somebody they were able to get pretty cheap in free agency. And just all across the board, they've been able to fill in with, you know, draft picks. They have 11 draft picks this year, the Kansas City Chiefs do. No wonder they're the odds on favorite to repeat because they're going to be able to replenish what they need to. And they've just been hitting consistently in the draft. Same thing with the Eagles. I think Howie Roseman might be one of the better GMs in the whole entire sport because of what he's done, you know, 
after 2017, they win the Super Bowl, and then he has to go through a couple of years rebuilding this team, and he manages to bring it out better than I think that 2017 team was. Um, he's just done a phenomenal job wheeling and dealing and making sure that he's got an elite player at quarterback once again. Uh, so it's just it's interesting to see what the fruits of the labor are for general managers who are not afraid to be aggressive and sort of have a better understanding of when they need to let players go and what they need to do to fill the void in the depth and the backup roles in order for this team to be uh, in intensely competitive as the season goes on. Because remember, this is February. The season started in, in late August, early September. So these two teams that played in the Super Bowl have been playing a lot of football. And if we're ever going to get there, we need to have much better depth and just guys that need guys that can step up. Because you saw what happened to us this year, uh, especially in the secondary with injuries galore. Um, there's just not enough bodies to step in other than, uh, other than Duke Shelley, who was pretty admirable this season. I, I will give him credit for that. So got to start drafting better. We got to start hitting on middle round picks. And it's, it's tough to see the Vikings making a big impact this year because we have so little draft capital as of this recording, uh, to go into the season. So we'll see what happens. So those are my takeaways. Got to have an elite quarterback, better, uh, better coaching awareness, uh, got to have a, a ball hawking playmaker on defense and we got to start drafting better. So those are my observations, my takeaways from the Super Bowl. Let me know what you think in the comments below about the game overall, the outcome, the holding penalty, and um, just uh, everything in general as it relates to the Minnesota Vikings. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.